Wait, so we got ten points right? Essie questioned, as Tom tallied up the scores in the little cafeteria at the racetrack. Yep, so did Dakota and Shiva, so you tie for second. Me and Jackie got thirteen. Fengi and Saf got seven. Oh, come on! Fengi let out, crossing her arms and leaning back in her chair. You broke two cars in the last two runs, Tom countered, putting away the pen. That's two counts of one point. You're lucky you didn't get zero for not finishing. They still drove, Fengi protested, holding up her arms. Yeah, they limped home after glorious battle, Jackie chuckled, looking very proud. As well she should be, Tom thought. She had won both her races, despite her little blunder in the second heat. Are you done having fun then? Jarek's question from outside, looking in the open window, causing an old man to nearly choke in his coffee. The poor guy clearly not quite having gotten used to the dragon yet. Yup, next up is a sport just for you, Tom chuckled, looking to Jarex with a smirk. Can't wait, it's fun watching you drive and all, but it did get a little boring in the end. The crashes were great though. Yeah, yeah, it's always funny when something goes wrong. With a bit of luck we might get to see something blow up today, but first our lazy ride needs to make it to the arena. Tom replied, getting up from the small table and giving the guy behind the counter a polite nod. Lazy? Do you have any idea just how insulting that is to the guy carrying you around all day? Jarek choked with a loud rumble, putting his head back from the window. Oh, I meant it as more of a blanket statement, Tom chuckled as he got up from the table. If you want the reason for the best dinner I can remember, I might just leave you here. And miss your chance to compete against the mighty tractors? Jackie asked, already having made it to the door and opened it. I don't believe you. Just because for once you stand no chance, Jarek retorted with an exaggerated huff. Hey, I'm not the one that needs to compete with heavy farm equipment. Not even her ass is that fat, Saf added with a laugh as they all walked outside. Shiva shaking her head behind the younger huntress. I guess she's flying by herself then, Jarek's declared. All the decent people aboard. Oh, come on, Jackie protested, raising her arms above her head. Tom walking up and giving her a reassuring pat on the shoulder. I'm sorry. There is literally nothing I can do. Oh, you fuck. Look, they have a runaway, Seth announced, pointing down at the perfectly straight strip of dirt. They were flying in formation with Jarex, the Huntresses going under their own power with Jarex breaking the wind as per usual. It was good exercise if nothing else, and it was already a bit cramped on the young dragon's back with Free and all the things they had bought. I thought they were supposed to be black, Essie shouted out over the wind as Jarex descended towards their destination. It's not a runway, that's the track, and judging by everyone running around they are busy prepping. Tom shouted back at them. So, where do I land? That is a lot of people, Jarex asked, looking down at the scene below him. Saf had to agree with that. There were a shit ton of people down there. I guess this is kind of a big thing then. Well, shit. I hope Ray is going to be fine. Track is probably still the best, actually. Give them a quick circle. Hopefully they will get the message and clear out. Right then, down we go. Don't forget to show off a bit, Jackie shouted out, wiggling around a little in Jarex's wake, letting the wind throw her around. Are we doing this then? Saf asked, looking around at the rest of the flyers. Jarex, we don't want anything falling off. Low flyby followed by a lazy banking right turn. Girls, corkscrew and roll around Jarex's axis. That should do fine, Dakota ordered. The girl was falling back and fanning out. I guess they just got an air show thrown in then, Tom chuckled, turning around to watch them fly for a bit. Jarek stove down to the field, flying along the track a few metres above the cab of a John Deere that was currently busy prepping the track. The poor 16-year-old at the wheel veered off the track at the sight of a dragon diving at him. Jarek just let out of a bemused chuckle as he pulled back up, going into the turn. 
The Flying Dragonettes pulled a corkscrew in formation around Jarex. Nothing fancy by their standards, but it still looked quite good. Tom's attention was snatched away by the sound of revving engines from down below, someone apparently deciding a salute was in order. Jarex had come in to land as soon as he came back around, finding the course clear of tractors and people, coming to a running stop and looking around at all the people staring at him, seeming a little confused at what to do. Saf and the other huntresses stayed airborne, Dakota leading into a vertical climb above Jarex. Stalling and falling back down, they went into spin dives, putting back up again before setting down on the ground. Saf and Jackie both bowed, as the rest of them just looked around at all the people wide-eyed. There were a lot of people here, all looking at them either from the ground or up on grandstands looking down. Okay, I'll admit it. I've missed this part a little, Saf chuckled, giving another bow as some people actually started cheering, seemingly having gotten over the initial shock. A loud voice saying something incomprehensible over what she recognised to be speakers on big poles for some reason. She guessed it might be some sort of announcer. Singing our praises, I'm sure, she chuckled to herself, as she turned back to see Tom disembarking, and walking towards some people who were coming over in a hurried jog. More Danish was exchanged, before the guy switched over to English, looking up at Jarex. Now that's what I call an entrance. Come on, you're late for weigh-in. Oh, right, the scales... Tom talked about that, the dragon replied, seeming a little taken aback by the amount of attention, raising a foot to wave at the crowd for a second. Yes, we need to put you in the weight class. If nothing else, then just for the hell of it. Were well, you the only one coming? No, we have a second one incoming. Don't know when they will be here, though, Tom clarified, looking up at Jarex with a bemused expression. Do they have a name? The guy asked, looking to Tom. Yup, Terexia, apparently. I asked for Baron, but he couldn't make it. You have got to be shitting me, Jarex let out in Draconic, looking down at Tom. What? You know her? Know her? Saf and the others met her. She flies with the princess normally. Is she coming too? Um, they didn't say so. I rather hope not. What are you saying? The guy tried in English glancing between the two of them. There might be a princess coming too, Jackie laughed. No, there isn't, Dakota corrected, looking to Tom and carrying on in English. If there was, we would have been swarmed in guards already, not to mention some grand declaration to everyone here. Yup, Saf echoed, shaking her head. But still, she was damn huge. Biggest dragon I've ever seen. Tom, for his part, just looked to the organiser, well then, I guess we are going to need some heavy chain and padding of some sort. All right, a harness of some kind. This is going to be some show. We'll sort you in between the actual competition. We have been working on a harness for the blue guy. Wait, I can't compete? The dragon questioned, looking down at the guy. Oh, man. I, um, I'll have her ask around, but, um, you aren't a tractor. The guy replied with a nod, looking up. Saf spotting just a hint of fear in there before he backed off. Curiously, he gave Jackie a quick wave, which she reciprocated. You know we are going to call you Tractor for quite a while now, right? Jackie sniggered, as she walked up behind Tom, rustling his hair. Fuck you, Jarek scrambled, though there was a smile on his face. Jackie just stuck her tongue out at him, leaning on Tom. Think we can get a drink around here? Those look like beers to me. I believe that could be arranged. Good God is hideous, Jerry scrummed to himself, looking down at the big rubber mats, lengths of sturdy chain, and rolls of tape that had been scrounged up for making his improvised pulling harness. The mats at least looked thick enough to make it decently comfortable, and the chains would probably hold, but still, it was hideous. Right, is that comfy enough? Essie asked, pulling one of the chains that went under his chest. It was just her, Ray and Tom, working on it right now, even if Ray was more here to hide from some of all the attention behind Jarek's. 
Dakota had taken charge of finding and putting together a harness for Terexia, taking Shiva and Fengi. Jackie and Saf, for their part, had been put in charge of finding something to drink for all of them. Cause that will end brilliantly, Jarek sniggered to himself, as he tried to imagine all the disasters that could result from that combination. To his further annoyance, they had to put the working harness over his proper one, since the damn gravity thing was in his own harness. It did at least mean he wasn't looking like a complete tramp in front of all the cameras. Should have seen this coming, Jarex, but no. You had to go pull heavy shit to show off. Damn it. I better not do so bad that it's embarrassing too. I think that's as good as we are going to get it, Tom went. Unless you want your own harness and the grab belt taken off. Might help you dig in those claws. Jarex took a second to think. Looking at the strange device, a smile starting to creep onto his face. <laughs> this is brilliant. What's got you worked up now? Tom asked in Draconic, as Jarrett's got up and started walking slowly over to the weight bridge. My belt. I'll turn it off before the pool. But don't tell anyone. Oh, you sneaky bastard, Tom chuckled. Still, I think you'll need all the cheating you can get. What do you mean? They put me in the smallest class? No, they put you in the standard class. It's pretty hard to make an argument that you have been modified or even just tuned for that matter. I would have you know I'm tuned to perfection. Sure you are. Right, up you go. For the record, tuning is allowed, just within certain limits for this class. How accurate is this thing? Jarek asked in his best English, looking at what he guessed was the operator as he got on. Near as Kilo, the man replied, as the result came up on a small screen. 4,312, the man echoed, looking to Jarex. You are allowed 180 kg extra weight. How are you so light? I'm a bit skinny. I think I'm fine like this. I don't want weights jangling around, Jarex replied, stepping back off again. The guy just took off his hat scratching his hair before putting it back on and giving a shrug. Wayne in a skinny dragon. That's going on the CV. Having been weighed in, he went to walk towards the paddock, where there was apparently a spot reserved for him to lie down in. It had been a rather long day, after all. A quick rest surely wouldn't hurt. You don't want to go see your competition? Tom asked, as he watched Jarek start to walk off. Jarek's just swung his head around to look at Tom, tilting it a bit. What do you mean? Come on. I'm sure we can find a spot where you can see as well, rather than laying back there. Oh, right, okay, Jarek replied, turning back around to follow the very excited looking human. There was even a spring in this step as he jogged. No, actually ran towards one of the guys they had been talking with earlier. I have not seen him this excited for a while. No, it's fascinating to see, Essie echoed, clearly having noticed as well. I guess he really must like it here. I think he's been here before. A lot, Ray added, looking over at the crowds. Look at all the kids. Oh, I think you're right, Essie replied, looking around. Look at all the little Toms. I bet half of them are crazy too. Jarek chuckled, as Tom waited at him, gesturing for him to follow. He got a nice spot on the far side of the track, near the end, where he could see everything. They had moved a tractor that was apparently tending the track between runs, so he could have a nice lie down at the same time. Tom, Essie and Ray all sat down on his forelegs and feet as he let out a sigh, getting comfortable. He had heard a few of the tractors go down the track, but he hadn't watched one yet. A small old rusty looking machine was currently backing up to the sled he was apparently supposed to pull. It didn't look like a sled to him, but what did he know? I guess they were getting the shaft out of the way first then. He had seen pictures of tractors before. This one looked positively puny, almost cute in fact. Pay attention now. See the guy with the flag out front? Tom said. Pointing down the track, Jarek's craning his head. Yup. 
Green means go, red means stop. Stay inside the lines and I think you should be good. If you ever stop moving, he'll wave the red flag. Easy, Jerix chuckled. Looking as the small tractor picked up the slack, smoke starting to pour from the pipe sticking out of the hood. Is it broken? The cars don't smoke. Also, it's not moving. It is making noise, though. No, no. Someone just had fun with that thing in the shed. Talk about picking your words, Javix chuckled, as Essie shook her head. Ray just looking at him a little uncomfortably. Oh, for fuck's sake, you big blue baby. It makes more power now, but it burns a shit ton of fuel to do so. Ah, I see. So, what is it? Oh, Jarek replied, his snigger faltering as the cute little tractor apparently decided it was time to go. Fire and thick black smoke spat from the pipe as it reared up, dirt flying everywhere. The thick black smoke poured up and over the sled as it started moving down the track, making a ridiculous amount of noise. And there's the turbo, Tom chuckled, looking after the small tractor as Jarek just stared. What the fuck? I told you cheating is not going to be a bad idea here. Why is it so damn loud? It was worse than the cars you were driving, Jarex protested, as Ray and Essie both clamped their hands down over their ears. Oh, you've heard nothing yet, Tom laughed, waving at a couple of staring guys that were apparently working the track, leaning back against Jarex. Are you showing off right now? Only a little bit. Stupid fences, Jackie grumbled. Her and Saf finally managing to find a way around to where Jarex had plonked down without crossing the track. She couldn't wait to see what all the fuss was actually about, though the sound of engines that damn near made her teeth rattle certainly boded well. She had gotten a few glimpses in too while Saf had been queuing for beer. Jackie got a way better idea than to just stand there looking dumb though, when someone came up to them asking for a picture. One kid hoisted up on her shoulder, and a big smile later, she had managed to acquire two fancy collapsible chairs from the dad of the family. So, with Saf queuing, she had started taking pictures with a small stream of people that resulted from letting one have a picture. She had thus far acquired five different hats, which she now had hanging from her horns, Four chairs, a box of earplugs, and some sort of loud horn she couldn't work out how to make work. All of which she was now hauling after Sapphire, who was in charge of carrying the beer. Right, we got drinks, Seth declared, as they finally managed to make it up to Jarex. And chairs, earplugs too, pass them around, Jackie added, handing the box to Essie, already having put in a pair herself. They work great. You look ridiculous, Tom laughed. Jackie put down the chairs. Hey, we can't all rely on someone else to sit on. I think it's a noble effort, Jarex replied with a nod, looking down to the start of the track. Oh, there they go, next class starting. That's a pro-war superstock tractor, 3,500 kilograms. You might be up next, big guy. 4,500 standard is after 3,500 super. Oh, shit. I'd better get up then. Go sit in your fancy new chairs. Any word on Terexia? Nope, not yet. I somehow doubt she would be carrying a cell phone. Right, obviously. I'll be off then. Wish me luck. You got it, big guy. Remember, speed is your friend. Yeah, go kick their ass. Jackie cheered, folding out her chair and sitting down. Saf handed her a beer that was slotted into the convenient cup holder. He's going to lose so bad, isn't he? Sef chuckled, taking a draught of hers. Yup, but I'm winning right now, Jackie replied, taking a sip of her beer. Shit, it's cold too. Damn, it's good as well. The machines had just kept roaring past, and they all had front row seats. Even if they did now have a few people standing around nearby. Tom eventually plopped his ass down in front of Jackie, she of course just swung her legs up to rest on his shoulders as he leaned against the backrest. All in all, she was very comfy as she hooted and cheered the struggling machines. 
The sound alone was amazing. And with her ears plugged, it didn't even hurt, as she could feel the ground shake under the chair, and even see the vibrations in the beer. Hey, Tom? Think they will let me drive one of those things? Not in a million years. Huh. <laughs> Pessimist. By the time it was Jarex's class's turn, some slightly larger but rather more dull-looking tractors had rolled out, and up in front of the sled. They had been nowhere near as fun as they slowly trundled down the track. Nowhere near as much of the rearing up and snaking down the track that made the others fun to watch. They still made a good sound, though. Hey, Jackie. Could I have one of those hats? Saf asked, looking over as a particularly sad specimen of a tractor failed to even move the sled, instead making a puff of white smoke. Sure. Which one do you want? Blue one, obviously. Fine, here you go. Uh, Tom, what do these mean anyway? They are brands. Blue one is Ford. New Holland is blue too. Oh, well, we ought to be on the blue team then, right girls? Fengi added in, having sat down in the grass. Obviously. What have I got? A green and two red ones. Damn it, Jackie let out, inspecting her remaining caps. Saf just sniggered a little from her chair, taking another drink. Oh, just say you want to stick a Ford badge in Jarek's. I'm sure you'll get all the merch you want, Tom chuckled. Jackie slapping one of the red caps on him for his trouble. No, we are cheering for the big red that's apparently dropping by. Oh, he's not going to like that, Saf let out, as they all laughed a little. Speak of the devil. There he is. When Jarek's got the green, he seemed determined to put on the show, kicking off hard and seemingly going for a gallop right out of the gate, clearly taking Tom's advice. He stormed down the track before eventually starting to slow down by the halfway marker, eventually reduced to a crawl. Dakota had to admit Jarex was definitely putting his back into it, as the chain strained under the force, his hind legs sticking into the thick clay and leaving deep gouges his front legs clawing at the ground. I guess all that field work has done some wonders, Dakota chuckled to herself, pulling a smile at the display. Go Jarex! Fengi shouted out, lifting her beer, Essie and the others joining in. The sands got remarkably quiet though, as everyone watched the dragon work his ass off as he slowly crawled down the track. He made it past the 70 meter marker, clearly struggling by now, as the sled made a noise the dragon rearing up and putting his full weight into the harness. Girls, go cheer for the poor guy, Dakota ordered, ushering them to go down the track. Race guy said the barriers are for safety in case something blows up. Jarex won't. Go cheer him on. Can't argue with that. Just stay off the track, Tom shouted after Saf and Fengi, who were already moving. After a short wait, even Ray got to her feet, running after them. Tom just laughed a bit before getting cut short by Jackie, hauling him to his feet against his will. Run yourself or I'll carry you in front of all these people. That's a threat. Tom just set off running without even looking back at her, like he was fleeing, Jackie giving chase as they ran down the track. Kids. Dakota just chuckled to herself, shaking her head. What about you, Shiva? I'm just enjoying the show, the smith replied sitting down in Jackie's now empty chair with a sigh. He's putting in a good effort, though. Shame Raoul isn't here, though. How he would have loved this, Shiva chuckled, as Jarex was clearly giving it what he could by now. One foot at a time stamped down hard into the ground, as his forelegs tried desperately to keep their footing, his hind legs digging deep trenches in the track. Tom and the girls were busy trying to cheer him on from the far side of the track, shouting and hooting. Even the crowd, which had been quiet thus far, started joining in, chanting, Jarex! 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 Much to Dakota's disbelief, he seemed to just keep going eventually, abandoning using his forelegs, instead just walking on the hind legs and putting his full weight into the harness. I think he's going to make it. It would seem so... intriguing. Shiva chuckled in reply tilting her head and taking a deep draught of the beer, 
Screw it. Come on, you overgrown lizard. Language. Well, you have to give it to him. Shiva chuckled. He's in it to win it. Let's just hope our ride isn't about to need a healer. Dakota countered, as the two of them leaned back in their chairs. If what Tom said of the amount of beer and food they have here is true, we'll be fine. Shiva chuckled, looking very comfortable, sunken into her chair. Useless long fucking track, Jarex cursed to himself, as he saw the 90 meter mark slowly creep by. So tired. They all just kept cheering, that we could just stop now. The sleigh was so damn heavy by now though, he really wished he had just tried to build up some speed in the beginning, like all those damn little tractors. He almost didn't register when the guy out front waved the red flag, and Jarek let himself collapse on the spot, panting and looking pleadingly at the guy. Why the hell did you do that? I wasn't done, you asshole! He cursed into Conic, before he heard laughing off to the side. Jarek, you dumbass, you did it! Jackie shouted out before joining in the laughing. Congrats! You get to go to the next pool too, Tom added in, laughing quite heartily himself. Jarex just turned to look at them, the sense of despair washing over him. You have got to be shitting me. Nope, better get you some water. You ain't got long. That's the hardest ever done, Jarex let out collapsing into a pile at the 80 meter mark on his second pull, which was apparently enough to secure him second place in his class, at least for now. Oh, come on, big guy. Can't be that bad. It's just a bit of hard labor, Fengi chuckled, walking up to his head and giving him a pat. I hate you, Jarek sighed, laying his head on the ground as Sled Crew started trying to unhitch him. No, you don't, and you especially won't hate the prize. What prize? Well, we had a little chat with the organisers while you were waiting. Let's just say he's going to be on the house tonight. What is... Drinks, you big dum-dum. Drinks on the house. The organisers said that was a fair trade. I think they just want to see a drunk dragon. Tom added with a chuckle. Jackie nodding her agreement as she let out a snicker. You're shitting me, Jarex let out. Suddenly feeling a bit better. Nope, I'm Jackie, she replied, giving Tom a punch to the shoulder, sending him off balance. Oh shit, incoming, Saf cried out, pointing at the sky. What? Oh, Jarex let out, looking up at the massive red shape that came down with a crash in front of him, regal head held high and peering down at him. For his part, he just lay there looking up at Tyrexia, a truly massive red dragon. Sleeping on the job, Greenhorn. N n no Jarek stammered out, staring in awe at the pissed looking red dragon before she broke out laughing. You have got to be kidding me. On your feet, soldier. Can't have you lying in the dirt with people watching. Yes, ma'am, Jarek sputtered out, getting to his feet, his expression turning to a combination of a scared awe and confusion. Now, what was it about a competition with the human army? I didn't come all the way out here to go on parade or back up that pransy princess. I will lay them to ruin. Oh, shit, right. Actually, the girls would probably want to see that. It would be out in the paddocks that way. Tom added in, pointing down to the end of the track. Marvellous! You may come with me to show me, human. She seems... Different, Saf got out, staring after the huge red dragon as she and Jarex walked off towards the paddocks. Tom running alongside to explain what exactly was going on. She, Jackie, Essie, Fengi and Ray just stood there gawking for a moment, not sure if they should follow. And no crew, Essie added, tilting her head. Is this a day off for her perhaps? Fengi tried, shrugging. I guess so. Might be on leave, Seth agreed, tilting her head. Think she doesn't like her crew? This is going to be so damn cool, Jackie declared enthusiastically. That's the biggest dragon I've ever seen. And she's going to be competing with human tractor things. 
Yup, and the army for some reason. Wouldn't those guys be dressing like Tom used to be back in the day? I guess so, Essie replied, as they all started scanning the crowd. There's one, Fengi let out, pointing at the crowd. A trio of guys standing amongst the crowd clad in green and brown. It's not quite the same, but I guess it's close enough. Right, I guess we can go say hi in a bit or follow them out into the paddocks later. But we are going to need a lot more beer, Saf replied, looking over towards the beer tent. As in more beer than I have ever seen before. I guess that's our job, girls. Yes, let's get on it. I want more too. Jackie let happily out, setting off towards the tent. The rest of them went to follow. Then I want to see what the army brought. Queuing was boring as ever, but they were rewarded with more of the cardboard holders full of beer. Saf handed them to Jackie, who chucked the first one right away. Saf just chuckled, going out back, looking for someone who seemed to run the place. She got a fair few curious glances from the people serving up beer to the thirsty spectators. I don't think you can be back here, miss. A kind-spoken man went, stopping her. About that. She leaned in. We have a bit of a request, if you wouldn't mind. Which is? We are going to need a lot of beer. Well, you are free to buy as many as you want. There is no limit. Oh, no, not glasses. Jarek's was promised some beer for competing, and I think Terexia is going to want her share too. The dragons want beer, the man asked, peering over his glasses at her, sounding rather sceptical. Yeah, wouldn't you? I mean, I guess so. Where do we get that much? They can surely drink hundreds of litres. Yeah, probably, Saf replied sheepishly, at the sight of the man scratching the back of his head. Right, I'll have to make a few calls. Do they drink liquor? Oh yeah, she replied with a big nod. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Who's paying? Organizers, we just need to make it happen. Fucking hell. Right, out you go. You still can't be back here. I'll see if I can get a tanker or something. Tanker, tank, Jackie, Sash shouted out, walking back out of the bar as she was told, waving down the tall woman, whose horns made her rather easy to find in the crowd. Finding her was not made harder by the fact she had now somehow managed to secure four of the cardboard racks full of beer happily drinking, as a rather large fat man was pouring beer in her mouth from his own plastic glass. What? The army. I bet you they bought a tank like Tom showed us way back. Those big steel boxes with cannons? Yes, Jackie, one of those. Oh, we are going to the paddocks right now. Thanks for the beer, man. <laughs>